Rock and Roll Geek Show 736. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Ah. Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Monday, September 26, 2016. Happy Presidential Debate Day, friends. All right, it is 8.15 when I'm recording this show. It's been a while since I've done a show, and once again, I apologize. I have just been so wiped out. Every night when I have a chance to do a show, I'm wiped out and I just pass out. I haven't even had time to do a show, but I'm here tonight, friends, powering through like Hillary Clinton does when she's got pneumonia. All right. <laughs> uh, tonight, I am going to do a track by track. Of, I'm pulling it out here. I have the vinyl of the new Degeneration album called Nothing Is Anywhere. But before I do that... I'm going to start off with a Degeneration song. The, the song this album, uh, I've had for a while, and I've been meaning to do a track-by-track track of this for a while, but uh, things have gotten in the way, and I have not opened my vinyl copy yet because I was going to open it on the track-by-track. Track. It looks like it's a gatefold, uh, perfect for unfolding and uh, or opening up and um, reading the lyrics and maybe uh, de-seeding your lid of pot like we used to do in the 70s. I don't have a lid of pot, but if I had one, I would de-seed it in the new Degeneration album. To get us in the mood for the new gener- Degeneration album, I'm going to give it so- give us something to compare it to. All right, This is their fourth album. I should pull it up on the Wikipedia so that I can... Um give you some fun facts about it, but uh, I'm going to give you something to compare it to. One of my favorite Degeneration songs from an album called Through the Darkness, which is their, I believe it's their third album. It was on Chrysalis Records, if my um, memory serves me right. Here is Rise and Fall. <laughs> Money. I'm mad, I'm mad 
There you go. Rise and Fall. That's from Through the Darkness. And my memory was mistaken. That was actually on Columbia Records. Their first two, I believe, uh, let's see, the first Degeneration album was on Chrysalis. Then they got dropped, or somehow they got out of their contract, and they managed, the, the, the legend goes, after they got out of their uh, Columbia Records deal, which was their first album, they managed to get the master tapes back. They, I've heard different stories that they broke into the uh, record label and, and installed the, the master tapes. And the other rumor I heard was they just purchased the master tape or they managed to negotiate the master tapes back, which is probably the one that's right. And the legend has it, they threw the master tapes into the harbor of New York City. So that's what they say. Speaking of the first album, I'm going to play in the background while I thank some donors. This can be an all Degeneration show, friends, tonight. So I hope you're, if you're a Degeneration fan, you're in luck. Do I have, do I have anything from uh, the original, from uh, when the, the guys went solo? Do I have Richard Bacchus? I'm looking for some music to play in the background while I, um, while I, Thank the donors. Actually, I have Rich, Richard Bacchus and the Luckiest Girls. Maybe I'll play that in the background. Let's see what that sounds like here. All right. A little more... Uh, a little more uh, Brit rock sounding. I think I'm going to call an audible and play something. I'm going to play something from the first album. I'm going to put the first album as background um, while I thank the people who donated. Let's just take it from the top of the self-titled first album on... Chrysalis Records. You know, there are several ways to donate to this rock and roll geek show that you're listening to right now, friends. Let me take a sip of this fine Tecate first. This is my third Tecate of the day. And you know what they say about the third one of the day? Always the best. Ah. Start off the top. Thank you to Adam Tereski for saving the show by sending me a computer. Thank you very much, Adam Tereski. I really appreciate it, friends. And there's other ways to donate besides sending me gifts like uh, Tim Origian and several other people have sent me. I just got a new gift in the mail from Penguin Publishing, a a book called Lost Rockers. I'm going to have the author on uh, soon, I think, Tony Mann. You can also... Donate through Patreon.com, patreon.com slash rnrgeek. Like Ken Kennedy, friend of the show, donates $5 every episode. Chiaki Hinohara, my good friend Chiaki from the Metal Woman podcast and the, pardon me, I'm Bourbon Rose Fine Tecate, the Japanese Metalhead show. Chiaki's flying out. I went to, to a, a book signing last week with Chiaki. Uh, sea Forager book sign. It was a good time. We had a few drinks and got our book signed and hung out and talked with the author, Kurt Lombard. Chiaki's going to see Dokken. Maybe I'll get a show review from my good friend Chiaki. Chiaki, you hear me? Show review of Dokken. Thank you to Brian Springer, also donates on Patreon. $5 every episode. Thanks to my co host and podcast mentor of Mad at Dad. Dave Slusher donates $5 every episode. Thank you to Betty Wood. That's right, a female named Betty Wood. Donates $3 every episode. Thank you, Bruce McMillan. Donates $2 every episode on Patreon.com slash Geek. Thank you to Matthew Hunt for $2 every episode. Thank you to Eric Stoll for the $2 on Patreon. Thank you to Robert Harvey on for the $2 on Patreon. Thank you to John Richardson for the $1 every episode. And finally, thanks to Corey Kohler for the $1 every episode on Patreon. There's also other ways you can donate. Like on PayPal, there's link to my PayPal donations 
at rockandrollgeek.com. Like Mario Zoth donates two dollars every month to pay uh, to PayPal. Thank you to David Ivy for the five dollars. Thanks to Jeff Thielalicky for the ten dollars. Thanks to Paul Fondery for the ten dollars. Thanks to Adrian Boshan, Bosch Rock in the forums and on the Rock and Roll Geek. I what is it? Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do approve people. So if you want to be approved. Go to uh, Rock and Roll Geek page on the Facebook. Thank you to John Tennis for the $5. Thank you to Dave Franco for the $10. Thank you to Greg Long for $5. Thanks to Jeff C.A. for the $5. Thanks to Jeffrey Lent, or excuse me, thanks to Eric Lentz for the $5. Thanks to James Venners for the $10. Thanks to Dean Gillespie for the $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell for the $10. Thanks to Deborah Dreyfus, a female, donates $2. Thanks to John Offenlock for the $5. Thanks to Richard Fusey for the $2. Thanks to Andrew Howe for the $5. Thanks to Dale Roller for the $5. Thanks to Christopher Del Grande for the $5. Let me back this up so I can end this on time. Let's see here. Thanks to Jer Carroll. Is it Jer Carroll? I think it's Jer O'Carroll. I think. I better, I better double check. I mean, I think it's Jer O'Carroll. Thanks, thanks to Jer for uh, the $5. Thanks to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thanks to friend of the show and friend of mine, Todd Cunningham, for the $10. Thanks to Lassie Sattvedhagen for the $2. Thanks to Jeffrey Canaparoli for the $2. Thanks to Stephen Mascord for the $5. Stephen Mascord is going to be doing a co-host donation, I believe, on Wednesday. He's coming all the way from Australia. i got to back it up again. Uh, let me t- put it... I'll just get into the next song. Fuck it. Thanks to... Sigmund Hydasher for the $5. Thanks to John Skiller. For the two dollars, thanks to Bradley Lisco for the ten dollars. Let me take a sip of this fine Tecate because I'm losing my voice. All these donations warms my heart, friends. Thanks to Rodney Cross for the five dollars. I think Rodney Cross might be a new donor. Thanks to friend of the show and friend of mine, Ralph Miller. By the way, everybody who donates is a friend of the show. Thank you to Michael Viloria for the two dollars. Thanks to Craig Vasiloff for the $5. Thanks to Bradford Page for the $2. Thanks to Dave Jackson in the School of Podcasting for the $10. Thanks to Chris Stanley for the $10 and for all the music that you sent me. Thanks to Peter Spark for the $2. Thanks to John Boveri. A little bit more of a louder Sins of America. This is what we have to compare the new album to. Very catchy songs to compare the new album to. Will it hold up? Or will it bomb? Alright, where was I? Uh, thank you to... Peter Spark for the $2. Thanks to John Boveri for the $5. Thanks to friend of the show Michael Mack for the $2. Thanks to Patrick Shanahan for the $20. Thank you to Chris Harrison for the $10. Thanks to Tim Harigian, who I misspelled on my notes here. Let me change the spelling. The third shift rock and roll geek. And we pray... The, the Tim Harigian will revive his health and live on to become a friend of the Rock and to stay a friend of the Rock and Roll Geek Show and a friend of mine. And let's hope he stays around long enough for me to have some non-alcoholic drinks because Tim Harigian probably shouldn't be drinking. Thank you to Michael Street who donates at least $20. Every, like every day I look on American Heartbreak, he, he donates through my American Heartbreak PayPal, which is the wrong PayPal, but I just I just go in there and transfer it over to the other PayPal when it builds up. But he's donated at least $20 this month, and he just sent me a, a new CD in the mail by a band called Supergroup. 
which I probably already have. I, I might, maybe or maybe not. I will play something from that on a few on the next show, possibly. That's all of the donations this month, friends. And thank you so much to everybody who donated. Without your donations, this show would die horrible, putrid, stench-filled, diarrhea-smelling, dog shit. Ah, you know what? You get the drift. It would die a horrible putrid death. Thank you to everybody who donated. I take a sip of this fine Tecate to everyone. All right. Let's do track by track of the new degeneration. I'm cracking it open out of the cellophane now. I haven't even opened this. I've had this for... So I've been planning on doing this since the, before the dog days of podcasting, which I never got around to doing it. I had, I had just that much content, friends. All right. So I'm, I'm opening up the, the uh, cellophane here. The album is called Nothing Is Anywhere. And on the front cover, it's black and white. And it looks like it's, uh, the camera is on the Jersey side of the uh, harbor. I don't know. I'm not, geography ain't me forte. But uh, you can see the New York City skyline. And in color, there is a little kid wearing Vans and a jacket pissing in the river. Just like Patti Smith's song, Pissing in the River. And on the cellophane, it says, Made in the Czech Republic. So that's where they got this press, is from the Czech Republic. It is on D, uh, copyright 2016 Degeneration. I don't know who did the vinyl, who, what the label the vinyl is. I think they paid for this recording themselves. Uh, let me pull out the vinyl here and see what the label is. It just says Degeneration. It doesn't have any record label, so they must have just pressed this themselves. It's a gatefold, and on the inside of the uh, little um, the vinyl, or whatever you call it, the label on the vinyl, um, it's got the album cover. It's the same picture. It's a nice thick vinyl. I'm looking to see a lot of times in the um, inner groove there will be some witty things scratched into vinyls, but there are no witty things scratched into this vinyl. On the punk rock records back in the 80s, especially the Black Flag records, would always have something um, hand scratched, hand scribbled on the uh, vinyl. So I'm not going to play the vinyl for you. I'm going to do it on the iTunes because... Um, just because it probably will make for a... Uh, I'm trying to get it back in here. Make for a better uh, continuity of the show, I guess. All right. In the... open, You open the gatefold, and on the left side of the gatefold are lyrics, which I can hardly see because it's very dark in my office here, but I will try to read them. And on the right side, on the there's pictures of everybody in the band. Um, Howie Pyro... You can't see his body, but in the video, he's got he's gotten huge, and his hair is very long. Uh, Michael, what's his what's uh, who was the drummer's name? What was the drummer's name? Is there, are there any credits on? Oh, shit, I'm gonna have to pull up a flashlight here. Da 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 da. Flashlight, flashlight. Okay. Uh, Michael Wildwood on drums. So it's all the original members. Michael Wildwood now has super long hair. He looks t like a completely different person. He used to have like a um, the standard rock haircut. Jesse Mallon on vocals. Danny Sage, guitar and vocals, who I think produced and engineered the record. Um, Ricky ba Richard Bacchus on guitar. Richard Bacchus, I always think, thought look, is the coolest looking one. He's playing a... Uh, a Johnny Thunders model uh, uh, gives a Les Paul or a Junior, but I don't think it's a Les Paul Junior. I think it's a different brand. And Jesse, so yeah, it's got everybody in it. They all look pretty good, except for um, the bass player. It doesn't look that great. All right, shall we get started? This the first song on the record is called. Who does it say produced? Well, I just said Rick, produced by Danny Sage. There you go, the guitar player, the blonde haired guitar player guy. Recorded at, let's see, engineered by Mark Lewis. Additional engineering, Kabir Herman and Brian Thorne. Mixed by Brian Thorne. Mastered by Howie Weinberg. Uh, there's a piano, Mark Lewis. Stooge piano, Apocalypse Kids. Dia. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, 
The cover photography is by Joseph Quiver. The back cover photograph is by Dave Steckert. The back cover is uh, the band in a rehearsal, in a cramped rehearsal studio. Band looks good. It's kind of a dark looking uh, rehearsal studio. It says to be played at maximum volume. So we will play it at mas- maximum volume. The first song is called Queens of A, written by Jesse Mallage, Mal- Mallage, Jesse Mallon, Danny Sage, Ricky Bacchus, just Wildwood Empire, written by everybody in the band. All right, listen. So you know the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system. Okay, uh, the, so let me get it on my pen here. If I like the song, I give it a plus one. If I don't like it, I give it a zero. If it's eh, okay, I give it a half, and then I tally it all up. And in this case, there are 13 songs, so if I like all 13 songs, it's a 13 out of 13. If I hate them all, it's a zero out of 13. And if I only like half of them, it would be a... Six and a half out of 13. All right, you get the idea. It's highly unscientific, but surprisingly scientific, if that makes any sense. All right, Queens of A, first song on the record. I'll cuss a love over microphones for winners. The girl in the back that betrayed me with a smile. Said everything happens for a reason, but I didn't see it coming. And the lights went out, and I couldn't shake it. Quite rocking, not as catchy as Rise and Fall, but nice nonetheless. I think it's a good rocking opener. It's not super catchy, but I'm going to give it a plus one. I think it's a decent song, and I, if they played this live, I would not go to the bathroom. So I guess that's a, uh, a compliment. My head would be bopping up and down. Or my toes would be tapping. say that uh, Degeneration and spe- mainly G- uh, Jesse Mallon. Jesse Mallon has become iconic on the New York scene. He's almost like he's almost up there with Bruce Springsteen with, uh, you know, up Bruce Spring as, as much as Bruce Springsteen is iconic for um, New Jersey. I would say Jesse Mallon is probably about as iconic for New York City. The guy has really uh, done a lot for... Uh, I don't know if he's done a lot for New York City, but I, th- I think you get my drift. And I should also say that Degeneration was a major influence on many, many bands in the 90s, including American Heartbreak. Uh, and I, a lot of bands I know were hugely influenced by Degeneration. Friend of the show, Jason Shepard, his band, Rem- Romeo's Dead, they were huge Degeneration followers as well. They pretty much were the... 
don't know if I want to call them the saviors of rock and roll, but uh, they were they were one of the bands that were really carrying the torch. They, they were the probably, uh, let's see, who got signed in New York around that time? It was The Strokes, um, Degeneration, uh, Bridget West, New York Loose. Those ba- those kind of bands. It was kind of a revival of rock and roll, and it was it was pretty. It actually was a uh, pretty exciting time. And if it was not for Degeneration, there probably would not be, have been an American Heartbreak. So there's a special place in my heart for them, I guess you could say. All right, the next song is called "Lonely Ones," written by Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage. Oh, by, by the way. I gave that one a plus one if I didn't say that already. Okay. Lonely Ones. Black sheep brothers and all the wish colors of the bars I never fall. Saddle kid to a launch it all night. Kill the party lights for safe in the dark. And you're waiting on a friend in the streets of town and dead. Set the cops out. Catchy chorus, not as upbeat as a lot of their earlier stuff. A little uh, more of a more of a depressing. I guess that's that. I don't know if that's the right description, but it's kind of a darker direction. But I kind of like it. I think this song is pretty catchy. Again, it's not as good as Rise and Fall or some of the better um, or better known Degeneration songs, but I like it. I'm going to give this one a plus one too. So so far, we're two out of two. All right, the next song is called Apocalypse Kids. This was uh, one I played on the Rock and Roll Geek show before. This was they gave this song away as, as like um, you know a, a free preview of the of the new record. Written by Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage. People have told me that uh, they did not like this song because it was a ripoff of uh, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Time Warp. So keep that in mind when you hear it. Apocalypse kids up on Suicide Hill Watching the girls playing video games And working all winter with the weed paste boys I stood at the toll gate, interstate highway, pondered the wasteland, west of the Hudson, sirens spinning for the ones who had too many stories. I think that Jesse Mallon writes better lyrics than most people. And they hung me out to dry for whisper of change. And again, I think this is a rocking tune, and it's quite catchy. Whether it's a ripoff, whether the main riff is a ripoff of Time Warp, it doesn't matter to me. Degeneration was always famous for um, copying other people's riffs, which who hasn't been?
can write lyrics half this good, I would be, uh, I would consider myself a great lyric writer. I like this tune. I'm sorry. I think it's a good tune. I'm giving this one a plus one. We are three out of three so far. Would that make it a perfect album so far? I mean, I don't like this. I don't like any of these songs as much as Rise and Fall or, or Capital Offender or some of the songs, but I like it a lot better than... D-Generation, on all their albums have probably four great songs on them. At least this was all, always my opinion. Four great songs, and the rest of the songs were just, eh, okay. So... These are better than a lot of the OK songs on their earlier albums. Not as good as some of the fantastic songs, but I still like them. If that makes any sense. Makes sense to me. one. Next song is called 21st Century Blues, written by Jesse Mallon, Danny Sage, and Ricky Bacchus. I don't know if the guy likes to be called Ricky or Richard, but I always, I don't know why I just call him Richard. Right, they got uh, some horns. That sounds like horns, but there are no horns credited on this album. Bass guitar on this song is not um, Howie Pyro. It is Catherine Popper. Catherine Popper. That's the hook, and I believe that this is probably Richie, Ricky Bacchus's uh, songwriting contributions. My guess. Uh, listen to the. I'm gonna back it up. And listen to the chorus again. Um, I'm wow, wow, my, What's what's the chorus? The lyrics. I have the lyrics right in front of me. I don't know why I'm not reading it, but uh, whatever. I got wow, but I wow. I got the 21st century blues. That that falsetto, I believe, is Ricky Bacchus, and that makes the song. favorite songs. It's not that exciting of a tune, but that the the falsetto, besides the great lyrics, the lyrics are fantastic. Fantastic, no, but great, yes. The falsetto and the lyrics make this a good song for me. I'm giving this a plus one, so we're four out of four. I like that one. Plus one. So we're four out of four. Next song is called Dance Hall Days, which is, could it be a cover of Wang Chung? 
Isn't that they didn't they have a song called Dance All Day as well? Let's see. It's written by Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage, so apparently it's not a cover. Dance Hall Days. Here we go! Here we go! I like the the I like the I like the pop melody, which sounds a lot like another song, but I like I like the feel of it. I get down on my scene. I like that. Sounds a lot like another song, but I still like it. Shaking and loose for the ghost of a girl. Cross the dirty river, breathe the dirty air. Last week's stem now, Cooper Square. Back at the local. Uh, that chorus is classic degeneration. Well, it started off great, and I like the the hookiness of that little riff. Not a little riff, but the beginning riff. It kind of, a little bit falls apart for me, halfway through. But I do like the solo. But I kind of like the song too much. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna give it a benefit of a doubt and give it a plus one. So far, we're five out of five. Next song is called Mercy of the Rain, written again by Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage. This will be what Dave Slusher calls a list song. Everybody wants to be my baby. Everybody wants to play some song. I really need to find a good job. Everybody wants to get for the You might think you're better than me. Born into your destiny. guess that um, this started off as a jam riff. For that reason, I'm going to give it a half. You 
So I like the kind of like the chorus, but the riff is just kind of uh, bah, 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 just repetitious, and I don't love it. I'll give it a half. Next song is called "Hat Full of Rain." It is written by Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage once again. So far, two notes. to the curb on a Friday morning, hiding through the streets in July. Got my six delivery, shirtless kids out, slipping through the crowd of by. Naked in the mountains in 30 minutes, we're still not you look at my face. Flower box swapping in my cousin, Maddie, gonna miss a double head of a chain. Say goodbye to all your friends, all your friends tonight. I like I like that pre-chorus. Say goodbye to all your friends, all your friends tonight. I think that's a brilliant line for what that's worth. Is that the chorus? Maybe, but I like I think that's a great line. Say goodbye to all your friends. And also, he says, "Gonna miss a doubleheader at Shane, which is a base at Shea Stadium, which is a baseball reference." So, all right, already, um, you got me. <laughs> Up the check, Christmas and washing dishes Hanging on the minimum wage Say goodbye to all your friends To all your friends tonight A hat full of rain came down in New York City A hat full of rain came down on San Juan Wait for me to call Send a message to my lover, dear I like this. I like it. It's quite pleasant. And the lyrics, again, lyrics are great. It's too late to turn back now. Say goodbye to all your friends, all your friends tonight. I have to break it down and you... Goodbye, friends! All right. Opening up Tecate number four. I like it. I mean, I hate to say I'm not a Bruce Springsteen fan, but I think this album has a lot more to, a lot more in common than with Bruce Springsteen than it does with um, anything punk rock. Which may or may not be a good thing depending on your perspective, but I like this. Way more, dare I say, dare I say, it's way more mature than most previous Degeneration albums. I like that one. I like that one a lot, actually. So I'm giving that one a big plus one. All right. So, so far, we're... This is a pretty damn good album so far. Six, six and a half out of seven. Next song is called Don't Believe. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Stop the clock. Whoa. Okay. <sighs> what is the song called? Don't Believe. Who wrote this song? Jesse Mallon and Michael Wildwood, singer and the drummer. Okay. Out of shooting blanks, left and loaded like a gun. I've been in, I've been stunned. Don't believe in my life. 
loving this one. It's kind of dull and repetitious and kind of dull and boring. Give it a little bit more time, see if it goes into a hook at all. Boring. I'm giving that one a zero. All right. So now we find some imp- we find some cracks in the armor. All right. Next song is called "Rich Kids," written by Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage. This is pretty much a um, two-person effort on this album. I like that. That sound again. That sounds like another band. What what is that riff? If you know, please tell me. Rock and Roll Geek at gmail dot com. Sounds like a Jesse Mallon solo tune. A song about the I can kind of relate to this because I think what's happening in New York is, is the same thing that's happening in San Francisco. Uh, it's turning into Hipsterville and uh, full of people who aren't originally from here and are kind of like uh, turning it into a shitty city. Shitty city. There you go. There's my lyrics. I like the chorus. Modulation, which I'm not a huge fan of modulations, but still sounds decent enough. I like this one. I'm giving this one a plus one. Very nice pop song. Nice pop song with negative lyrics, which I'm always a fan of. I like that. It's very nice. All right, next song is called Militant, written by Jesse Mallon and Michael Wildwood, the drummer. Last time they wrote one on the previous one was, which one was it? It was the one one that I gave a zero to, track eight, which was Don't Believe. Is that right? Don't Believe? Yes. So will this one be a jam? Session turned into a song. Oh, let me do it to the song. Okay. I like the snare roll fade in. Sort of a play. There are there are only there are only five lines in this song. So maybe he repeats them. Let's listen. Let's take it back from the beginning. We will analyze.
analyze these five lines in this song, okay? We're going to analyze the lyrics. A little deconstruction of the lyrics with your friend Michael Butler here. Punk rock. Chaotic. Alright, the angel of death and the power of now. This is uh this song sounds like something else too, but I kinda like it. The angel of death and the power of now. The crowd. Burning my eyes as I look through the crowd. Snail on a razor. I am God's lonely man. Black and white picture in a negative land. A black and white picture in a negative land, motherfuckers. Wait a minute. That's more lyrics than are written down, so they lied. They wrote down five lines of lyrics. There's, there's a, the entire song of lyrics. I don't know why they didn't put the rest of those in the, in the liner notes. Maybe they ran out of space. Who knows? I kind of like this one. It is sim it was a, it's a little like a... Uh, uh, maybe a Dead Boys. Sonic Reducer. I'm going to give that one a half. I, it's a decent song. A half. All right. Next song is called Peace of the Action, written by Jesse Mallon and guess who? That's right. You guessed it, friends. Danny Sage. <laughs> This one also sounded like could have been just a jam. Danny comes in with this one riff and just repeats it, and Jesse Mallon sings some good lyrics over it. Then back to the droning. I think if they played this song live, 
people would just be kind of standing there. They wouldn't say it sucked. They might veer off towards the bar and buy a beer, or in my case, I'd probably go use the bathroom because I've had five Tecates. I'm going to give this one a half based on the catchiness of the chorus, but not a great tune in my opinion, so I'll give it a half. That's a generous giving it a half. I'm veering towards a zero. Imagine that they're probably a little bit bored with this song too. It just doesn't sound very uh, fun to play. Alright, I'll give that one a half. Next song called Not Going Back, written by Guess Who? Jesse Mallon and Danny Sage. Not Going Back. I like that. Classic Degeneration. That's a sing-along. I'm not going back, not going back. That's, that's a good sing-along. I like it. I'm going to give that one a plus one. Nice, catchy pop song. With negative lyrics, which I like. All right, there's one more song on this record. It's called Tomorrow, and it is written by... Guess who? You guessed it, friends.
song sounds more like a Jesse Mallon solo song. Decent enough song. I don't love it. I do not hate it. I'm going to give it a half. So let's tally it up here out of 13 songs. We got one, two, three, four, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half out of 13. That's about right. Again, the non scientific scoring system is pretty damn close, in my opinion. A great album? No. A shitty album? No. A good effort for the reunion of Degeneration? Yes. So there you go. I think it's a good... I, I, I'm happy with the new Degeneration. I'm 9.5 out of 13. That's about as good as Rick Springfield, right? We did a track by track of the new Meatloaf on Mad at Dad. It got a 6 out of 10. That's not that good. Track by track of the latest Bon Jovi got a 4 out of 10. That's not very good. Steven Tyler, 4.5 out of 10 out of 13. That's not very good. Bucky Meadows, 9.5 out of 14. That's not as good as the generation. Alright. If you agree with me. Send me an email to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with this. Oh, wait. What's going on? Okay, back up. With this, send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com with the subject line, Butler, you are absolutely right. The non scientific scoring system of the Rock and Roll Geek Show is, in fact, unscientifically extremely scientific. All right, in the subject line. And if you disagree with me and think this album is a piece of crap, put in the subject line, Butler, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. This album sucks. The new Stephen Piercy and Rat is going to be way better. Put that in the subject line. All right. I hope you like this track by track of the new Degeneration album, which is again is called Nothing Is Anywhere. It's their first album in... Let's see, what, when the last, that last album was what, 99? No, yeah, the last album was 2000, it was 1999. So this is their first, al- first album in seven years. Is it as good as Through the Darkness? I don't know, I'd have to go back and do a track by track, but uh, not a bad effort from Degeneration. And I'm going to close out with another, with another Degeneration song. Before I do that, let me tell you, I can reach me, friends. You can find me at rockandrollgeek.com, as you well know. Hopefully, if you're a new listener who just Googled upon this train wreck of a review of the new degeneration, send me an email <laughs> with the subject line. I stumbled upon your show while looking for a review of the new degeneration album, and I found an idiot who doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, and he's a moron with an unprofessional show. Put that in the subject line, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Or you can send me an audio comment, area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. You can also find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. You can find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. You can find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. <sighs> and that's enough ways to reach me. Uh, Stephen Mascord is supposed to be coming over and doing a co-host donation episode on Wednesday. So uh, that's a midweek bonus episode to look forward to. I had no idea Stephen Mascord uh, was from Australia. Maybe, maybe he's not. I don't know. We, w- we will see what happens when he gets here. I think he's going to be in for a uh, not too pleasant surprise when he sees the mess in my studio here. All right. <laughs> I'm going to close out now with the Degeneration song, one of my favorites of all time and probably yours too of Degeneration songs. This song written by Ricky Bacchus, Richard Bacchus. Maybe Richard Bacchus should have written more songs on on, uh, 
Nothing is anywhere. <laughs> All right. But I like the album regardless. This song is Capital Offender. Thank you so much, friends, for listening. We will talk to you, I guess, hopefully on Wednesday. I may not exist on your go card list, but my dues are paid in full. For a couple of grand, you wanna shake my hand? Tell me what are you trying to pull? Did I say the first album, sorry to interrupt the song, but did I say the first album in seven years? First album in 17 years. My math is, and math ain't me forte, friends. All right, we'll take this all over again. We'll talk to you Wednesday. I may not exist on your gold card list, but my dues are paid in full. For a couple of grand, you wanna shake my hand? Tell me what are you trying to pull? You got cash, you got flash, but you ain't got the heart to bleed. You're strong, young. you got some, but who's got the blood you need? A capital of It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.